Hey, Physics 30 students, how's it going? Um, hopefully you are staying safe, staying distant from others, and just overall being smart about your choices at this point. Uh, so we are going to start our new unit. Uh, as you can see from this is electromagnetism. So if you haven't printed this off or need a printout of this uh, set of notes, I could print them off and then leave them at the front of the school and you can come pick them up from the school. Or I'll leave the link in the Google Classroom of the PDF version of the, of the printout sheets here. I'll try to keep it maybe four slides per page like we, I usually do. And you can print them off at home and you can follow along. Um, there's going to be a lot of different hand gestures and a lot of different hand movements. So I'm going to try my best to, if those come up, load up a really big screen so I can show you the different hand rules that we do. Sorry, this is a little bit blurry here. Uh, now how do I get out of this? Oh, we're down here. All right. Um, apart from that, um, it's a pretty interesting chapter. There's going to be lots of little videos. You probably already noticed that in the link here for this lesson that there's a few different videos that we're going to watch on YouTube. Veritasium. I can't remember if there's a Vsauce video in here. There's a Bill Nye video as well. Yeah. Um, so as we go through, just uh, if you get stuck, you have a problem, just pause, uh, go back a little bit, maybe see what I did. If you have any questions about what I did, uh, come to my office hours. Uh, my office hours are going to be between 10 and 11-ish on most days. Yeah. There are some exceptions. We do have some uh, uh, PDs coming up to talk about assessments and how to, how to live in this reality. So, yeah, so this is a learning experience for everybody. Um, if you have any questions on that or any of the assignments that I assign throughout the week, uh, other than just looking at the answer key, you can drop into the Google Classroom. You don't need a camera to do that. I'll have a camera. I'll have a setup that looks like this, where I'll be able to write on the screen and answer the questions as we go. But you could just type the questions into the chat in the Google Hangout that we have, and I'll figure it out from there. Uh, so let's get at it. So we're going to talk about electromagnetism. So it is the second part. You can notice that this is the second part of the unit where the first part of the unit, we talked about electric, electric statics and charge and the nature of charge and how the charges interact with each other and how they create a field. Now we're going to be talking about uh, magnetism, the second part of electrostatics. Uh, we'll talk about this later on about how magnetism is produced. Uh, but I'll just give you the quick right now. It's produced by moving charges. If I move a charge, I produce a magnetic field. Uh, there's many famous scientists that we're going to talk about through this chapter, very much like the previous chapter. Uh, we're going to talk about Millikan and Coulomb, those famous scientists, and you have to know their scientists. Now, um, there's more on this one. We'll talk about Orsted and Maxwell. No, Maxwell's the next chapter, sorry. We'll talk about Orsted and uh, Lenz, Faraday, and some other people as well. Okay? So what we know so far about magnetism and what you should know already is that there's two types of poles, right? There's a north and a south. And there's always going to be a north and a south pole. So when you talk about magnets, you're always going to have the two sides. You've got a north and a south, right? Uh, even if you break this magnet up into two pieces, so, so you broke this into two pieces, what you'll have now is a north and a south and another north and a south. And you keep on breaking these up. You keep on getting smaller and smaller little magnets. Um, as long as it's a permanent magnet, that is. Okay. Yeah. We'll talk about more permanent magnets, what it means to be a permanent magnet and what it means to be an electromagnet. But as long as you keep on breaking these up, even down to the atomic level, you're going to have mini magnets. Okay. Uh, the same thing, uh, same kind of rule applies. They do have the same similar characteristics of charges. So two like charges so or two like poles or a north and another north from a different magnet, they're gonna repel each other. So it's gonna be a force pushing either way, right? And if you see a south and a north, you're gonna get an attraction force here. You're gonna pull each other in. Now you can see how I drew this, like this doesn't mean this just stops here. It just means I just wanna draw the rest of the magnet. But there's, for every north, there's a south when it comes to magnets. And wherever there's a south, there's a north. So that's what the magnets would look like, okay? So like poles will repel and unlike poles will attract. Right? Pretty simple. That's just some things that we should know already. 
Um, now, the same idea happens with uh, what we talked about, gravity and electric charges, is that when you bring magnets close to each other, they're going to interact. And they're going to pull in on each other. They're going to uh, be attracted. They're going to repel before they even touch each other. So there must be something doing that, right? So we bring in this idea of what we call field theory, where just exactly the same as electric charge and gravity, where there's this area of influence around the magnet itself, that when it's something else is put within that area, another pole, those two fields from the two magnetic objects will interact and either repel or charge. And very similar to how uh, electric charges work, and then there's positive and negatives, there's different directions. So we have these vectors. The north end of a magnet will have a different direction than the south magnet so that you can see the different interactions and how they work. Um, you could see this shape uh, by looking at a kind of an iron bar, a, um, a permanent magnet put within a um, iron filing solution. If you look at that, when you see that, and this is just the diagram of what it looks like, so you can see there's a bar magnet put inside this glycol solution. The glycol solution is just something that's a little bit more viscous than water. And suspended in there, it's just a bunch of iron filings. And these iron filings, um, exactly what they sound like, are just little pieces of iron. So there's an iron filing. You could, this is what it would look like. So there's a bunch of iron filing pieces. And they kind of look like little compass needles. And that's exactly what a compass is. It's just a larger piece of iron. So this is the zoomed in version. There's a lot of those little pieces here. And when a magnetic field, when they're placed inside a magnetic field, they line themselves up in such a way that they'll kind of go end to end and they'll follow a pattern. So if you look at this picture here, and if I were to draw little iron filings here, they would line themselves up in a way that would look like this. And then these guys in the middle here would look, line themselves here and they would line themselves. They line themselves along these lines here. So the little iron filings, I could draw a couple of those in there. Now what's happening is that, well, there's gonna be a video later on here talk about what makes a magnet. But what actually happens is that when a iron filing or a ferromagnetic material, so that's where that FE comes from, iron. It stands for ferromagnetic. So this ferromagnetic material, when this ferromagnetic material is put inside a magnetic field. So let's just zoom into this one iron filing here. So here's my iron filing. And here's my magnetic field. So there's a field being generated and there's similar to these red lines here. So these little red lines are my field. So when there's a field passes through an iron filing such as this here, it makes the iron filing into a magnet as well. So it moves what we call the domains, it aligns the domains of the iron in such a direction the iron filing becomes a tiny magnet, where it has a north and a south piece as well. And then if there's a bunch of these iron filings inside a magnetic field, and say the magnetic field in this case is going this way through these guys here, they're all going to become tiny little magnets. And then those tiny little magnets will all be pointing in the same direction. That's how a compass actually works. So when the Earth's magnetic field passes through the needle of the compass, that compass becomes a magnet. And then it aligns itself up with the magnetic field that's in. And then the north and the south pieces here will attract, and they'll kind of just create a little chain of iron filings following the line of the field. So the magnetic field is denoted by the letter capital B with a little vector arrow. So that's what this is, that blue, uh, red line that I drew here. And all these little iron filings are just going to line themselves up with that magnetic field. And there's a lot of discoveries from just even from this little picture. So that we have all these little consecutive uh, magnetic fields, these lines that don't cross each other. They run side by side. And then iron filings will line themselves up with it. You can see that the stronger towards the poles and it gets weaker as it goes out. Now, the strength there, this is going to come, comes up a couple of times in some of my tests and some future tests here. Uh, the strength of a magnetic field, so this is my magnetic field, is 
it's it's inversely proportional to the distance. So it gets further away from the source of the magnetic field. Here's my sources right here. These these big pieces right here. These are my sources here. So maybe this is the north and this is the south here. Um, here's my big bar magnet. Here's a trolley big bar magnet. Right. So this is my source. But as I get further away, you can see that there's a big clumping of iron filings around it. As you get further away, the iron filings are a little bit weaker because they're not as attracted out here. So as you move further away from the source of the field, it does get weaker. Now, remember in electric fields and gravitational fields, electric fields and gravitational fields, as you get further away, it's based on the distance squared. So if I double my distance, I have a quarter of the strength. If I, this is supposed to be a G there, sorry. If I triple my distance, I have a ninth of my field strength. But when it comes to magnetic fields, it's actually just the inverse. The inverse relationship is not being squared. So if I double my distance, it's half. Um, there's a lot of math behind this. It's Gauss's law. Uh, involves a little bit of calculus and stuff. So we just take for granted that this is the relationship. It's a pretty important relationship that uh, you'll see later on when we talk about practice questions that this is not something that's similar to the others. It has some similarities, such as that a similar uh, to gravity or so similar to electric fields where it has two directions, like a north and south and a positive and negative. Uh, similar that it does decrease, but it doesn't decrease with the distance squared. It just decreases with just the distance. Um, so you're going to see some of these um, kind of, this is going to pop up a lot. So this is a very good uh, thing to know. Um, so that's what a field looks like, and that's what's, what's happening out here. So it comes out of one side and into the other. Now, what we're going to see is that it comes out of the north side. So if the top was the north here, it's going to come out of the north side of the magnet. It's going to travel through and permeate through space here, and then travel down towards the south. Now, the difference between... Um, this electric fields and gravitational fields is that it doesn't actually terminate. It doesn't stop on the south. It actually continues through the magnet and fulfills a loop. And there's a reason behind this. And we'll talk about that later on. Why is it always going to be a loop? Right? Uh, a lot of scientists or a lot of people will just say that, okay, it comes out of the north. So it's generated from the north and it goes towards the south, but actually it continues through a loop. So all of these little things are loops. And there's a pretty simple rule about that, where that comes from. And we'll talk about that when we talk about our first hand rule when it comes to magnetism. And yeah, we are going to do some hand rules. And I think my video is backwards. So this is my left hand. This is my right hand. So I am going to have to flip the video so when we get to those hand rules, it doesn't get too confusing. Yeah. Now, like I was saying... Uh, let's get to the view here. Like I was saying, uh, there is a field. And this field is generated in such a way that the field comes out of the north, right? It's a vector, right? So it has a direction. It's a vector field, so it has direction to it. So that it's going to have my little arrows. And it's very similar to the electric one where if you think about every single little point in space around this magnet has a bunch of different fields. Remember there's the electric field field, the electric field. There's the magnet. Now there's the magnet field, magnetic field. There's the gravitational field. And each one of these little fields is a property. So there's a property here at this point that has all those little different fields kind of grouped in together. And this field right at this point is always going to be pointing away from the north and towards the south. So at these little pieces here, it's going to point away from the north and towards the south. And you can kind of see that as you get to the outside edges, it starts bending outwards. It's coming outwards because what's going to do, if you look at all these arrows, all these dots going around here, and you follow the tracing of these dots, they're going to loop around. So they're going to come away from the north, loop around towards the south to each side. And then these ones here, bigger loops as you go around. And bigger loops after you go around there. And then same thing on this side, there might be an arrow kind of going straight out. 
it will try to loop around and come back to the self unless it finds another self and continues on that loop. But there might be some of the lines on this side kind of going in towards the main. Now, like I was saying, it doesn't just stop here in the self. It's going to continue through the main. It. Continue through the main it and complete that loop. And some of these loops don't even have to be within the main. It. You can think there's some loops out here where there's a loop that goes up and around here. So there's going to be a bunch of loops here. There will be loops. They don't cross over each other. They are complete loops. So this arrow that's coming out the side here will loop around and eventually come back on itself at some point. Okay. So that's the general rule when you're drawing a magnetic field is it always coming out of the north of a side magnet. Let me just get this. So it's going out away from the north towards the south and then continuing the loop within the magnet from the south to the north within the magnet itself okay right. so the definition pretty much and we'll talk about this later on the def this is just this is called the north because that's where all the lines are coming out from right it's just that's the definition the definition it's the north because that's where the lines are coming out from that source okay right. now if i were to draw and we're going to do this later on. If I were to draw an imaginary magnet right here, a little like an invisible magnet kind of floating there because the line here is coming out this way, this side would be the north because it's going in that way. This would be the south. So this would be a kind of an imaginary magnet kind of just floating there. Okay. And the same thing goes with all these little, if I put an iron filing here, the iron filings the north side would point here, the south side would point here because the it's going in the same line as the magnetic field coming out of the north of the iron filing. Plus the north is also tracked towards the south. So the iron filing becomes a little tiny magnet, right? So this also tells us some things about the Earth's magnetic field. I think that's in a few slides from now. Um, let's just see what else we have here. Yeah, that's essentially what that this is saying. It's just that the rule for creating a magnetic field that's just coming out from the north into the south. It will continue through the magnet. And you notice that out here in this area out here, the density of lines is pretty weak or pretty spread out. And in here, the density of lines is pretty compact. So I could say that strength of the magnetic field inside the magnet itself is much stronger than outside the magnet. And as the density up here, you can see the density here, it's pretty tight. So because of that's pretty tight there, that's pretty strong. But as you get further out, the density spreads out. The line starts spreading out and gets weaker and weaker. Same, it's the same idea as an electric field and gravitational field. As the density of lines get uh, less and less, the field strength gets less and less as well. Yeah. Okay, so when you're drawing magnets, just one second. All right, sorry about that. Um, I probably didn't notice it's just me jump there. Uh, so when we're drawing out magnetic fields between two magnets, follows kind of the same pattern that we we're doing. And I have this, I loaded up this little applet down here that we can see that we have a few different magnets. So here we can draw a magnet situation like the one we have, I believe. So we have a north, south, north, south, north, south. And this is kind of backwards. Um, you probably could just switch them around, but you could see that every point in time, like this is this is more of the field theory that was more accepted now, where every single point has is interacted by the field generated by the north and the south magnets. And you can see that they're pointing out from the north, pointing out from the north. I can just move this a little bit closer here. Okay. I'll move the compass out of the way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ah. Okay, so coming out of the north. It's coming out of the north. We follow these lines around. I don't know if I can draw on this picture. No, I can't really draw on this picture. Just drags this thing around. It's coming out of the north, following along this line. You can see that this one here kind of goes a little bit around. And then you see there's some in here that kind of go up towards the south. But this line that goes up around is going to go through the south. Keep it going through, going through, going through, and then back around. So I'm going to draw in this. 
let's use this color here. Uh, maybe not. No, it's going to be blue. Yeah, that should work. Okay. So it's going to come out of the north. So it's going to come out of the north towards a south as much as it can, travel through the magnet, and then out of the north here, depending on which side of this is on. You know, I'll just draw that a little bit higher. And then it's going to loop back around towards the south through the magnet and complete the loop. Okay. So these are all going this, this direction here. Okay. Now there's going to be some here. It's going to come out of the north here, but it's not going to go in towards this south. It's probably going to go back around, loop here, and do it here. And then the same thing's going to come out. It's going to come out of this north here, but maybe it's going to come back down around this way. And they might have some little loops in here as well. Okay. And then it's going to be pretty symmetrical on this picture here. It's going to go around, and you're going to have a loop around this way as well. And then you might have some minor loops here as well. Right. Um, so essentially that's what that one looks like. Right. So it's going to come out of the north into the south, and sometimes it goes out of the north and back into its own self or into another self, but I'll always continue that loop and come back around. Right. Actually, I'll just keep that there. I'm just going to delete the bottom section of this one. Now, what if I have two Norse kind of stuck between each other here, All right? So let's go back to our apple and see what that looks like. So let's turn, oh, let's put that one back the way it was. Let's turn this one around. Here we have two Norse, All right? And you can see that they're both coming out of the north, but they're not gonna, they're not gonna cross through each other because that's just not how vector addition works. So there's gonna be a null point between the two where the field adds up to be zero, it's going to go up and then it's going to go around and it's going to go around both directions. So if I were to draw this one, that's going out this way and this one's going out that way. It's going to be very similar on both sides. And the loops can get bigger. Maybe they'll go a little bit bigger like that. And this one, but they don't cross each other and around they go. Now, what if I put the two magnets kind of side by side like this, where both north are pointing up and both south are pointing down, obviously. Um, so let's see what that looks like. I think I can just load up this in my here, two magnets point up. All right. Let's move my compass out of the way. So you see the lines are coming out of the north again. I went out of the north, out of the north, out of the north. There's a little null point right here. You can kind of see where it's coming, go north, and they. Some lines go upwards, or some lines go back down. And they're not going to cross through each other. So let's see what that's going to look like here. So it's going to come out of the north, and then down through the south, out of the north, down through the to the south here. So they're coming out of the north. But some lines will go out of the north, and then up, out of the north, and up. And probably because of this, they're going to loop back around all the way around here. It's going to go all the way around and do the same thing on the other side. And do something like that. You can have some other loops in here. These lines will continue through the magnets. I'm not really drawing those, so I should draw them on the other one too. The lines will continue the loops. It's going to be a nice loop on both of us. Then there's going to be magnets lines over here too. Let me do this. Okay, so it's going to look something like that. Look at this. All right. Um, so this point here, if you haven't already watched it, you should watch this video uh, by Veritasium. What makes a permanent magnet? There's a video that's also attached to this, which goes to the, the next part of this. When we talk about an electromagnet, what makes an electromagnet? What makes a permanent magnet? They are related to each other. If you want to watch both at the same time, you can. Uh, but go ahead and watch this video and come back and we'll talk more about it. Uh, no, just a little bit here. Yeah. All right, so hopefully they found that video interesting. Um, there's lots of things that's happening within a magnet. We're not too really concerned about uh, 
the atomic structure, those tiny little magnets that they're talking about, those electrons are all being a little itty bitty magnets. Not too concerned about the spin of the electrons as well. Because uh, you remember everybody talked about that. That doesn't actually produce that much magnetic field. It's those tiny little magnets, the electrons are, and because they're all pointed the same way. We're just worried about more or less the domain part of that, where the, all the different domains could be possibly going in a different direction. There'd be a permanent magnet here. Um, they're magnetic because in the atom, the electrons are moving around the atom. The electrons themselves are tiny magnets. But the main part that we're worried about is that we want the domains to kind of line themselves up. So the movement of all these kind of electrons, they kind of cancel each other out. Remember what we said about passing iron through a magnetic field, all the little iron filings are going to line themselves up in a certain direction. So that's like within a domain, they're all lined up, but maybe in other domains, they're not lined up. So you can see here when you think about domain theory, that maybe the, Domains are all jumbled up, but within each one of these domains, there's lots and lots and lots of little iron uh, or metallic materials that are all kind of pointing in the same direction. So they group themselves up that way, but they're not strong enough to affect the other domain because it's a solid material. So here's a little demonstration of what this could look like here. Right? So we have a magnet here. We've got some domains over here. This is ferromagnetic material, so maybe like iron or something. Say so I were to move this south end, you can see the lines were moving towards the south end, so they're probably coming out of the north end over here. So if I move the south towards the iron magnet or the iron ferromagnetic material, you can see the domains slowly line themselves up because they're, they're being pulled towards this other magnetic field. And if I were to move this away, this is put there long enough and move this away. Those domains will relatively stay there. Um, you can jump up those domains pretty easily. You could drop the magnet. You could heat the magnet up. It's going to cause the fluidity of allow the iron particles to kind of move around a little bit more and you can get them to jumble back up, but then you just put it back within a magnetic field and you create a permanent magnet that way. Well, permanent enough, right? So you can see once you took away the uh, strong magnetic field, these guys didn't quite stay lined up. They're all kind of jumbled up just a little bit. So this is how you create a permanent magnet. Now, Bill and I, we were watching other videos. So there's a video about Bill and I is talking about, uh, talks about the Earth's magnetic field. Now, the Earth's magnetic field is very similar to this bar magnet that I'm putting here. So this Earth's magnetic field, here's the Earth, here's the iron in the iron core. As the iron solidifies, they're solidified in a way that all the domains are pointing in the same direction. So we can dig up iron and notice that the iron is magnetic because it was within the Earth's magnetic field. And he talks about in the video, how do we know the Earth's magnetic field is flipped over? Well, it's because if you dig up certain chunks of iron at certain points in the tectonic plates, they're pointed in opposite directions. So the Earth's magnetic field was turned over at one point. And it's turned over many, many times throughout Earth's history. Um, we're not going to get into too much of the detail about what makes the, Earth mag the Earth's magnetic field. I just want to talk about what is the orientation of Earth's magnetic fields. I'm just going to go... Um, I guess I could just draw it on Bill Nye's face right here. Okay, so let's say we have the Earth. Let's draw the Earth out here. Okay, right? so here's the Earth. I'm going to draw the Earth. That looks like the Earth, right? Okay, so let's label the Earth. Oh, okay. Apparently it didn't want to keep the Earth. It just decided to erase the Earth. Uh, let's, keep, let's make the Earth green this time. Okay. So here's the Earth. Okay. What we know is that when we put a compass on the Earth, so here's a compass. Let's imagine we put a compass right here on the surface of the Earth. So with a big compass. That compass is going to point 
towards the North Pole. So it's going to look at this, and there's going to be the North Pole up here. So it's going to point towards the North Pole. So up here is the North Pole. Okay. Now, what we know about compasses and what we know about iron filings, iron filings will line themselves up with a magnetic field. So here's the iron filing. So magnetic field's passing through this iron filing here. It's going to point itself up so that the north is pointed up that way. Because if I look at how this iron field is going, there's probably most likely a north of some magnet down here. This is south of some magnet up here. So coming out of the north into the south. So these iron filings will line themselves up in such a way that the north end of those iron filings will point towards the south part. Now, what I was saying before is that the compass, a compass is just a, a larger iron filing, iron filing that is somewhat permanently magnified that the north here is much denoted by the north and the compass is color, usually colored in, is the north side of the little magnet. And that magnet is now attracted towards the following the magnetic field lines caused by the Earth. So here's the magnetic field lines caused by the Earth. So it's going to be going that direction. So if I put another one here. But if you look at the lines here, what I just drew, the magnetic field lines are coming out of the bottom into the top. But when we draw magnetic field lines, they come out of the north and into the south. They're coming out of the north and into the south. But this is the North Pole. It's down here is the South Pole. So why are they coming out of the South Pole and into the North Pole? Should it be coming out of the North and into the South? Well, that brings us to a, a topic of um, terminology in this case. So let's think about what's actually happening here. So the North Pole is actually labeled the North Pole, because that's the direction. Okay, I'm having problems with my marker here. Okay, that's the direction the compass pointed. The north end of a compass, they labeled the north end of the compass. It pointed north, so they called this the North Pole because of that. So the north part of the compass pointed that way, so that's where the north is. That's the North Pole. But technically, what's actually at the North Pole or within the, main, within the core is um, if you watch those videos, we talk about moving current, moving charge creates magnetic field. So as the Earth is spinning, the iron within the, within the core, which is iron, uh, ionized because of the extreme heat, um, is moving in circular motion because the Earth is spinning around. And as it spins around, it's producing a magnetic field. And it produces a magnetic field such that the magnetic south is where the magnetic, the geographical north is. So this is a magnetic south, and the magnetic north is where the geographical south is. So there's a couple of different words here that I have to worry about. We have true north, geographical north, and magnetic north. Now, true north and uh, geographical north are approximately in the same area, but the south pole of the Earth magnetic south pole of the Earth is actually at the north of the planet. And the north pole of the Earth, magnetic north, is actually at the south pole, geographical south of the planet. So the Earth is essentially just a big bar magnet caused by moving iron, moving around in circles. So there's iron moving around in a circle. And by doing that, it's creating a magnetic field. It creates a magnetic field that comes out of the north, travels up into the south, out of the north, into the south. So if I were to put a compass, if I were to put a compass in this field, it would point, it would point upwards, it point towards the North Pole, but it's actually pointing towards the magnetic south of the planet. So it's it's upside down what you think. And that's what Bill and I is talking about when it flips over. That magnetic pole will flip over. The North Pole stays the North Pole, the South Pole stays the South Pole, but the magnetics north and magnetic south will flip. That happens, all the, all the compasses would point the other direction. They point downwards. It would be easy fix. We just change the programming, change our compasses so that 
the south side of the compass is now the north side. It wouldn't change too much. It'd be a little bit chaotic to start off with, but it would be quickly fixed. But at this point, more, at this very moment, the south pole, or the south pole is actually the magnetic north pole. So the lines are coming out of the south pole here, going up and around the surface of the planet and up to the top. Okay. I'm going to stop the video at this point so it doesn't get too long. I probably talked way too much at this point. Uh, then we're going to talk about Orsted here. Um, there's going to be another video you're going to have to watch. Well, I, I suggest you'd watch. I'll talk about some of these demonstrations down here. And hopefully, hopefully we'll get through this just fine today. All right, see you later.